Hey, welcome everyone to the September meeting of Finance Personnel and Higher <coughs> Education. Um, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. Sokol on the motion, second. Mr. McKibben on the second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, minutes as approved. Uh, privilege of the floor, Kim Cook. If you could step to the microphone. She's not ready to go first after uh, after, being the other day. <laughs> after being last. After being last. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for uh, having me here this morning. Um, I'm here just to um, update you on our progress with um, our expansion for Open Door, and with a homeless shelter and various other programs, and to ask the county if they would help us with capital funding. So, um, just as an overview, we are in. Um, under contract for uh, 226 Warren in Glens Falls. That's the Warren Furniture Building. Uh, we are going to the City Planning Board uh, on Tuesday, and we should be closing this fall, uh, pending pending Planning Board approval, of course. And uh, we're looking at a two, probably a three-year uh, window of renovation in a couple of phases and fundraising and. Everything depends, of course, on our fundraising and how quickly that comes in. Um, the plan there is to um, continue the services that we're already doing in a very tiny little building on Warren Street or on uh, Lawrence Street, and we've got other programs that are happening in borrowed space. So we need we need to have a home <coughs> for that as well as um, expanded shelter. So the plan is to increase our dining room to 100. That is not a lot of extra people, it's just extra space. Yesterday we had over 60 people in our dining room for lunch, and uh, it seats 30. So, <laughs> yeah, people were waiting and, and so on. So we, we often have over 60 people, so uh, a dining room of 100 is not a huge jump for us. It's just more space to do it in so that our guests who have a little trouble with crowding can feel more comfortable. We're also going to have a teaching kitchen where we can teach cooking classes for people at home as well as help people who want to get into the food service industry and, and move on into a new career. Um, we're having a drop-in center that will hopefully pull people out of the library and the downtown, give them a place to hang out, but it'll also give us opportunity to, um, to access them and pull them into our <coughs> programs. And there will also be a laundry facility and a shower there for the people who need it. Um, we will have a resource center there. We already have some grants for this. It will enable us to teach our Bridges Out of Poverty programs on site. We're doing them now uh, where we teach other organizations who work with people in poverty how to understand the mindset of poverty. And if you've never been to one, I highly encourage you to go. We've had probably around 100 people already this year take that class from many organizations. And we're also teaching getting ahead classes. Those are for people in poverty who, um, who want to move ahead but just don't have the tools or understand their resources. We'll have a computer room there as well and a chapel. Uh, and we are working with Hudson Headwaters who will probably contract with us on a health clinic and we're looking at having dental there as well. We're going to provide the space. Someone else will, will run it. Um, of course, we already have a food pantry and clothing closet and so on. We're just hoping to have a better facility for that. The big, uh, the big addition is the shelter program for men. We're starting with men because they're the ones that are falling through the cracks. So um, we will have an emergency shelter that will have around 40 to 50 beds. Um, we're working with the state on certification, so they'll tell us how many beds we can have there. Uh, but it'll be a 30-day in, 30-day out kind of program. And then there will be a 90-day program that people w who are actually proving to us that they're moving forward can stay longer. They may be working a job and need to save for rent, and they'll get a little longer time. And then there will be a one-year program for men who w really want to change their lives. It'll have uh, discipleship, it'll have uh, addiction recovery, we'll help them with uh, job training, and the life skills that they're lacking might be GED, 
um, whatever it is they need. We'll work with them for a year to make them uh, able to re-enter society and be sustainable. That's our real goal, is to, to help our guests, whether they're someone who's coming in for a day or someone who's living there for a year, to make them sustainable in our community. Um, I think that's where we're dropping the ball in our, in our country. <coughs> we're, we're helping people, you know, we're putting them in housing, but they're not moving forward, and they can come out and, and just have the same problems that they had before. So that's a very quick summary of what we're doing there. Um, if you look at the second page of your handout, it, it shows that it is going to be a $5 million project. I gulp when I say it. Um, half of that, however, will come from federal grants. There are great grants for housing, and there are three of them that we are working with a consultant who's already said, yes, you totally fit it. You should be able to get this without any problem. So our local, um, our local ask is 1.75 million, and we are working with a grant writer as well who, who is writing grants now um, for the rest. So it'll be local and, and um, local and non-local grants. So that is a very fast summary. But um, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Yes. Can, uh, what is housing tax credit revenue? Those are the federal grants. There's a federal home loan grant that in the amount of 650000 and we qualify for two of them. And then there's the, um, I'm going to misspeak, I think it's a new home tax credit or something like that. And it's a, it's a million. Great. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Then uh, without objection, I think that any, um, requests that you have uh, should be uh, submitted, I think, in maybe in one of two ways, uh, directly to uh, the county's uh, uh, budget officer. We're in the budget review process right now, mm -hmm. and the county uh, administrator. Um, uh, or uh, if you're working with a county department presently that's involved in the program, DSS, or a department like that, the, mm -hmm. uh, it's possible that it could also come through their budget request as well as part of a their role, so to speak, in the, um, mm -hmm. in the project. So I, I should say that we're, we're collaborating with them, but we are not working with them in that way. And, and I need to let you know that we are not planning to uh, be charging for bed nights. Once we get this building open, it's free of charge. We are not becoming a, a provider in that way. So we, we feel that we're a private sector solution to a public sector problem. So we, while we're working with social services, we are not going to be charging through them. But we will come to, I'll, I'll get with the budget. Uh, that would be my recommendation if you mm -hmm. uh, contact uh, Amanda and she can arrange for appropriate meetings. Uh, Dennis? Okay. Uh, how, how much support are you looking for? You know? I don't know. <laughs> We need 1.75. <laughs> no, really. Um, I'm just let getting the word out, and um, we'll take whatever help that the county is is willing to offer us. Are you looking for a long-term commitment, or just a shot in the arm to get you going? Um, you know, right now we're with our other donors. We're looking for three-year commitments. So some people will give us a one-time shot in the arm, and some will will give us an amount over three years. It's completely up to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. I don't believe there's anyone here from SUNY. We have a joint meeting oh, with oh, oh, Washington County coming up soon. Um, uh, Mr. Whitehead. Thank you, Travis Whitehead, Queensbury. Um, you just had another request for uh, additional funds, in this case $1.75 million. We get them all the time. We have you know, limited abilities to do this. Uh, however, uh, there's $1.75 million in the budget right now uh, for paying uh, off the municipal center. Uh, there was a judgment earlier uh, this month in uh, Monticello, Arkansas, where the little town, it's a city actually of 9,000 people, Monticello, Arkansas, won a judgment against that mammoth, Siemens, $4.6 million settlement 
they extracted from Siemens just re very, very recently. Um, we have more money than that at stake. We have 1.75 in the budget right now to be paid on the municipal center. And I think we have every reason not to pay that. You can pay it to, to her, to STEM, to whatever, increase the fund, but there's met many, many places better than putting it into Siemens pockets. You have more than that. You have probably $4 million potentially available if you go after Westmount. Um, I think that what you need to do is to uh, take a good look at what just happened in, in Monticello. There's some very good uh, video links where the lawyer is addressing the board and going through all the ins and outs, the, what the good things, the bad things that happened throughout the suit, how it came to this point, and how they're ending up with a check for $4.6 million. Um, and I think it would behoove all of you to take a look at that. I sent the link links out to Mr. Garrity and Mr. Reichenbach last night. Um, I do feel that those two are part of the problem, that you guys do need to uh, seriously address this issue with Siemens. And uh, there's, there's money on the table. And uh, you're not doing your jobs if you uh, don't uh, look at this uh, harder and if you don't uh, uh, start getting opinions from somebody other than uh, a lawyer that doesn't seem that he has any interest in seeing this go forward. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Whitehead. Um, I'm back. sure that you can um, <laughs> forward that link to everyone, Brian. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and just uh, for an update, uh, uh, what, what's, have we entered into a contra the contract yet with the, uh, we have entered into the contract with the engineering company uh, to and, uh, but as soon as you get the, a timeline on that, uh, if you could get that timeline out to everyone, because I know there's a concern about the payment for this year. And, They're uh, working on it. I know they are. But maybe uh, we could get some um, um, early indication. Okay. I spoke before Mr. Before a formal paper is actually distributed. <coughs> Ms. Bramer. Thank you. Just quickly, if when Brian is sending that out, if he could delete the other commentary from Mr. Whitehead, that would be appropriate. Thank you. I'd agree with that. Good, thank you. And just one observation, I, I have read a little bit about the the latest Arkansas suit, but uh, and there are some similarities to, to that suit and uh, our municipal building. And, it, and, and I, I think the comment that the judge made is that they, uh, Siemens did not hear, adhere to the letter of the law as it related to an RFP. So, so there are similarities, I think, in our, uh, in, in our municipal building in terms of was an, an RFP presented? Was it not? Uh, I think the answer is it was not. Okay. So my point is, I think there are some similarities between what we have here in this building and what occurred uh, in Arkansas. I know we all uh, await that uh, that uh, report. Uh, we agreed to it. I think all of us, because I think all of us are interested in wanting to know. So if we could move on, I'd appreciate it. Uh, action, uh, action item: uh, request for transfer of funds as cash for committee approval. Shall I entertain a motion regarding the transfers as uh, proposed? Uh, Mr. Dickinson on the motion. Second. Uh, Mr. McDivitt on the second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carried. Uh, item two. Uh, items to be discussed by the human resources director or the personnel officer. Um, maybe both. Um, review of report on uh, tracking of vacancies that's uh, filled. Um, any comments on that, uh, Jackie? If you have it there for your uh, review. And if you have any questions at any time, of course, you know, don't hesitate giving Jackie a call. Um, and the personnel officer request for transfer of funds in the amount of $2,000 from budget code A, 1430, 130 civil service salaries part-time to budget code A, 1430.120 civil service salaries overtime to cover overtime for testing dates through the end of 2016. Charlotte had a motion uh, to bring 2B to the uh, floor for uh, consideration. Uh, Mr. Dickinson, uh, Mr. Sokol on the second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, what do we have here, Trish? Um, we are happy to report that uh, we are now going to be fully staffed going forward with our transition and have a retirement coming up. As you know, we um, don't close our civil service at one and Thank you. 
during that time we'll be um, training people and holding exams and um, during the process of the transition we still have our uh, personnel tech who will be helping with that transition so we're going to have more overtime than we might have um, anticipated so we're looking to eliminate any of that uh, happen. Thank you. Now let me say, I, I think you're doing a yeoman job down there. It's just incredible, and I think uh, it's very important to have those active, active lists uh, so we don't have to fall back on um, provisional type appointments, which can become very problematic, as you know, uh, going forward. So I think uh, the uh, having um, act, especially in those positions that turn over uh, often, we need current and active uh, lists. So I know that's 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 where you're headed and it's um, it's good to hear good to know it's happening already um, relative to item 2b are we ready for the question all those in favor of item 2b signify <coughs> by saying aye. aye aye opposed item 2b is carried we are um, uh, request from the county treasurer uh, request to extend the existing contract with the environmental capital LLC for financial advisory services for bonds authorized by Warren County as previously authorized by resolution number 100 of 2014 for an additional three-year term commencing January 1, 17 and terminating December 31st, 19. Chair, I'll intend a motion to bring this to the floor for consideration. Uh, Mr. Simpson, uh, Mr. Molino on the second. Um, Mike, what do we have here? This is just extending our contract for our fiscal advisor. Our fiscal advisor is the person that takes care of our bonds when we go out to bond. Um, we've dealt, we've, uh, I've been dealing with him since I came into office, very pleased with his services. The funding for this contract comes out of the bond proceeds, and one of the things that I like about this gentleman is, is that he gives us a flat fee. Most of the other fiscal advisors charge based on a percentage of the total bond. So it actually, especially with what we're doing now with the court expansion, this is going to save us some money over the course of the, the contract. Any questions for the uh, county treasurer? Just what is his flat fee? Uh, I knew you were going to ask me that as I was sitting there. <laughs> I think it's about eight grand. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions? There being none, are we ready for the? Thank you, Mike. Are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item three, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Item three is carried. Uh, Mr. Aye. Chairman, could I? I just would That's like fine. to update one thing on this um, relating to the bonds. Um, in the last couple of weeks, we have gone through a bond review from Standards & Poor's to uh, review our bond rating, and um, the initial, initial indications are that um, he probably, we probably will be kicked up a little bit, which will save us some money on the interest. Currently, we're at AA-, minus, which is pretty close to the top. you got AA-, minus, AA+, plus, and then AAA. So hopefully, if we can get to even AA+, plus, That'll save us a couple of bucks on the interest rate. So, well, that's uh, that's very good news, and um, I uh, I hope it comes to pass. Uh, that can be significant. Yes, uh, it can. Thank you. In terms of the borrowing over many years. <coughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, no, item four: referral from the county facilities committee. Airport request to amend county budget in the amount of forty-two thousand four hundred eight eighteen for reimbursement to the county for a share of natural gas installation by Schumerhorn Commercial Holdings. Chairman, a motion regarding 4A. Bring it to the floor, Mr. Dickinson, uh, Mr. Merlino on the second um, discussion. Um, basically, this is his um, reimbursing us for the cost as it related to his structures. Are you ready for the question? All those in favor of item 4A, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 4A is carried. 4B, authorizing the closing of several capital projects and the return of remaining funds to their funding sources. I think we'll take these one at a time. 4B, um, Chair Lantana motion to bring 4B to the floor. Uh, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Uh, Dickinson on the second. Uh, discussion. There being none, are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item 4B, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 4B is carried. Uh, 4C, uh, increase in capital project H399 land easement acquisition runway 12 and 19 in the amount of $200,000 for the acceptance of FAA grant funds received. Chair Lantana, a motion regarding 4C. Mr. Uh, Dickinson, uh, Mr. Simpson on the second. Uh, discussion. 
I just want to look at this real quickly because I was at the meeting the other day. I thought that this was a grant application. We already received the money. Um, I it does I say I receive donation. Yeah, I think uh, that uh, we, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think basically we've been in, invited to submit the application is, is what, what I believe this is. Do you have anything to add on that? This is an this increase. Is it is. It's a, it's a grant. He's asking for a $200,000 increase right. in uh, the grant to acquire uh, Right. This was explained in, land. in, right. in okay. committee. I think that that's um, that's a, that's a grant that uh, we uh, we expect We'd to already applied for. That we have already applied for. Uh, it's an increase. We believe. The attachment says we received the money on 826. Does it? The recent well, that would simplify matters. Turn to 4C then. That's a good comment. We had applied for this, but we got the money. We'd already applied for this money. So we were awarded it. That's what I understand. All right, it does. Uh, excuse me, on item H uh, on the outline, it says, uh, <coughs> right on H says, uh, Federal Aviation Administration grant received on 826. I don't know what we're saying. Oh, H. Mr. Chairman, at the meeting the other day, the notes that I took down, because I know we did question that it appeared as if it was an amount of increase, and Ross had indicated at that time that it was not, in fact, an increase, it was an entire grant that we were asking. At that point, I had questioned about the um, grant reimbursements and how that worked, and he did indicate that this, um, he, he went through the different grant reimbursements with it, but he did say that it was not an increase, so I'm not, I don't know if maybe just the resolution needs a little clarification, I think I'll fill in. Section H, there's some errors too. But perhaps he could just clarify it for the full board meeting. Yeah, no, what's increasing there is the capital project. It's, in other words, you're amending the capital project by that amount, is what's, is what's happening here. Right, that's what he had indicated. That's is that correct? Yeah, I, I believe it is. You'd have to amend the capital project. Right, we don't. Mm -hmm. We don't show them ahead of time until you receive the grant money. Any other questions? Already, we're ready for the question. Then, all those in favor of item 4C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. 4C is carried. Opposed. Uh, we have one. one yeah, I'm uh, still opposed. confused. Um, I'm also going to oppose it until I get clarification. Okay. My notes are different than what yeah. you're saying. Right. That's what I'm confused And we have two okay. uh, opposed. Thank you. Did you get that? Okay, good. All right. Building and grounds uh, request for appropriation of funds totaling $120,000 from the general fund unappropriated surplus for milling and paving of the employee parking lot at the Municipal Center and abatement and renovation of the old jail kitchen. Chair, I'll take a motion to bring item 4D to the floor for consideration. Uh, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Frazier on the second. Any discussion? I... Audience? Thank you. You were... I was trying to get your attention. I'm, I'm, That's okay. I'm, I'm fully aware. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Well, this is, you know, fine, and I think it's great that we're renovating the um, old jail. I just, I know that coming up in 5A is our request for another position for the public defender, and I would really like to see that happening sooner maybe than us paving a parking lot for 80000 So I maybe the budget officer could give us some indication of... Is Mr. This Thomas... Something? Would you share your thoughts on this? Are we paying this? for this out of the same funds that could pay for right. the... These are uh, items that have come before the budget uh, process several times. Uh, especially on the uh, 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 And I think 
I think with your question about the uh, another attorney that we signed off on that request to, to prove that the finance committee has to uh, approve it. Finance has not yet signed off on that. Right. No, we, we have not. Right. Well, we okay filling the vacancy. We're waiting for the finance committee to approve it. I think the um, um, the only comment I would have that might add some value would be that uh, a, a capital item like this, uh, is, uh, especially a parking lot, is not a recurring kind of expense. Uh, uh, an operational cost increase like the one that we're going to consider would be obviously an annually a recurring expense, including benefits. So that would be the um, – if, if it were a recurring expense, I, I think I'd, I don't think Frank would be making this recommendation. Uh, if, it was going into our operating. Do you understand what I'm saying, Claudia? Yeah. That, yes. that, that's the distinction that I think is important here. Uh, Mr. Dickinson. Uh, I, I apologize. Uh, I'm sure this has been discussed many times. So what are we doing to the jail? They're going to uh, go to the kitchen area and finally remove the asbestos from the kitchen area and make it useful. And we need more space for the, uh, the uh, assigned council. So we'll have more space available in that wing of the jail. Excellent. Thank you. That's why we're going to do the renovations. Great. All ready. Are we ready for the question then? Uh, relative to item 4D, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 4D is carried. 4E, request to appropriate 50740 from the unappropriate fund balance for the purchase of eight roll-off containers. Uh, Charles had a motion regarding 4E to bring it to the floor for consideration. Mr. Simpson, uh, Supervisor McDivitt on the second. Uh, discussion? There being none, uh, this was discussed extensively in committee. So are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item 4E signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 4E is carried. <coughs> item 5, referral from the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee Public Defender. I request to create and fill uh, the new position of Assistant Public Defender Number 7, annual salary $45,000, effective September 19, 2016, as well as to amend the Department Table of Organization and salary schedule accordingly. Um, and a, a motion uh, on this uh, would need to identify a, um, identify a source of funding. Um, well, let's bring this to the floor for, for discussion, Ms. Bramer and Mr. Dickinson. Um, questions? It was uh, discussed extensively in committee. Um, if I remember this correctly, part of this is, uh, tracks its way back to um, requirements that have uh, been imposed by the um, State of New York. And yes. you might want to recite that again for <laughs> no the record. Well. Um, the sh short version is there's a Harold Herring case, which is a civil suit that required attorneys at arraignment. I have provided the committee um, with the documentation about how many more cases that means we're carrying each month uh, that we have to report to. It takes about an hour to do each arraignment. I have only did the statistics for courts that we actually go to as opposed to a county court we're in the building, so I didn't put that in. It comes out to about 15 hours a week additional cases that we're going to court to cover that is not in our schedule. So it adds up quickly, so therefore I have to send an attorney to a court and I don't have an attorney in the building to cover their regular court. So we're really having a difficult time covering. Uh, the DA is also in this position and she is also asking for another position in her budget. I am aware of that. She and I have had many discussions. We have tried to coordinate between the two of us, but the public defender's office is required to be there. The DA's office could appear by phone, and sometimes they do. They don't appear all the time, but we have to send someone. Last night, after I did all my stats for today, I found out I had to go to another court and cover two more last night after hours. So it's a recurring thing, and I need some staff. That's the shortest way I can do it. Good. A good short version. Okay. Um, Rachel. Thank you, Murphy. I um, I know I wasn't here for the meeting recently. I did send a couple of follow-up emails, but I'm um, I'm aware of this discussion. We've had it before. I know we've brought this um, to our attention um, regarding the, the additional imposition. But I am um, very concerned about it. I, you know, there is not grant funding available for this. I think there is a difference between, um, or maybe not enough of a difference between the DA's office and the public defender's office in terms of um, staff as you compare it to caseload and um, 
and what their current employment is. I'm also concerned that this isn't part of the regular budget process. As you indicated, the VA is asking into the regular budget process. Um, but more importantly, several months ago, I asked for an analysis of assigned counsel and how that's working in terms of responding exactly to this legislative issue that you're talking about. And if, in fact, we could look at, would it be more advantageous financially and better for um, those uh, receiving benefits from the public defender's office and assigned counsel to look at a contract or um, how we used to do it where there were significant amounts of money that were able to be saved doing it that way. We did have some requests from um, people in the community to take a look at that policy again and that procedure. Um, I know there's been some discussions behind the scenes, but I, I'm uncomfortable moving forward with what our chairman of finance had just indicated as a reoccurring expense. Um, without any source of funding, without having it reviewed throughout the regular budget process when we're so close to it, and um, also without really having a sit-down conversation and, and finding out more about the assigned council, how it used to be done, how it's currently being done, and how we can better use the resources that we already have in place. Um, so I, I'm just not convinced at this point, but with given all of our other budget obligations, it just seems there's a lot of requests for staffing. Um, and uh, this is one at this point in time I'm just a no on. At the last committee meeting, I addressed the issue of, um, in terms of per diem, uh, the contract would have to be at the current county rates for the assigned council office, which is $75 an hour for felony, $40 for a misdemeanor. The other problem that goes along with this is that these arraignments occur at random times. I don't, I can't and cannot lie to you and will not tell you that all arraignments will be at this time, X time, this time, because it depends on how people are picked up. In terms of one of the proposals that one of the supervisors asked at that last meeting that you were at, that I spoke at, they wanted to know what other counties are doing. Washington County, I indicated what they're doing, I indicated what Saratoga is doing, I indicated that paying someone on a contract basis would not be as cost effective based on our analysis, analysis that we've done before in terms of the public defender's office. In addition, there is no conflict defender program. That program has to be approved by um, the Bar Association as part of the, under the, the county laws, and um, so there is none of that in effect. I can't address creating that, obviously, because that's beyond the scope of my employment, and I believe there were legal issues problems with that in the past, and that's why it was disbanded, because it wasn't compliant with the law. Um, so those are some of the issues. And Just for the board's information, the uh, balance in our contingency account is 65389 issue of one million. Uh, the, the other thing I just wanted to let you know is at the last committee meeting, she asked us for two attorneys. And my proposal was that she ask now for one, and then in her 2017 budget, ask for the additional one. So it was kind of a compromised position because they are running around in the middle of the night and doing all this overtime stuff and they need somebody in there to kind of relieve that pressure. So that's why it's, you know, she, I think she is looking at the recurring expenses coming up in her budget. But I think that uh, the point that Supervisor Sieber is making is, is, is an important point to take into consideration um, and that is that uh, Th this is a uh, uh, once funded for the balance of the share of the fund balance. It will have to be brought into our um, operating budget for next year, and and, and that's I, I share that concern that you have. I, my, the problem I have at this point is I don't really see a good way around or, uh, dealing with the issue other than this. Um, but that's your point's right on in terms of um, it's not part of our uh, present tax levy is the way that the way to say it. It's just not. Ms. Sieber. Supervisor Conover, I'm more than committed to having additional discussions both with the chairwoman of um, criminal justice and the vice chair along with uh, Marcy and Joy and, and Brian Reckenbach and everyone else about uh, that conflict defenders program. I mean, we've been having kind of a backdoor conversation about it, but um, you know, we are so critical of budget requests that are coming in front of us this year more than ever 
Frank started the meetings very early this year. I know this was addressed several months ago, um, but sitting on the standing committee for NISAC, talking about the specific issue, having the um, implementation dates move back, I just think that there is an opportunity over the next month or two to have some really tough conversations about that, to work collaboratively with the DA's office and the sign council. And while Marcy, I appreciate that it's outside of your scope of employment or your duties, I do think this needs to be a collaborative effort where we're all working together for the betterment of the county. And again, if it's going to be one now, one next budget cycle, I mean, this, <coughs> this isn't a small expense. And privately, I'm happy to also um, address other concerns that I've heard from the county regarding the specific issue, but I'm not comfortable publicly talking about it. So maybe they have one. I will be able to post. I have not posted the position. It will be a new entry level position because the salary is 45. That is the same level as my grant, last grant attorney. I just want to add one comment. For the last 14 months, I have been covering arraignments every Friday night because I don't have a staff member that I can just the schedule on to have them cover on a Friday night because I need them covering courts during the day. So I feel that I have worked very hard trying to keep the cost down. I'm restructuring my office, thinking outside the box. I've spoken to personnel and I've spoken to HR and I've spoken to the county attorney about some changes I intend to put in to make the flow better, to keep things moving faster and keep things going. I feel that my office really needs some additional staff. I wouldn't have made the request. I told you the criminal justice committee months ago in terms of what's been going on. I've been keeping everybody apprised of what's going on. There is no grant money coming in. There is no state money coming in. I'm sorry, I don't know how to make that happen. I know that there was a request, could the courts assign fees to these people? And the answer is there is not a way for that to happen. And so that's the reason why I've gone forward with this request. We could uh, just stop for a moment. Maybe we, uh, I would ask um, Ms. Bramer and Mr. Dickinson if they would uh, perfect their resolutions to include the source of funding, which would be, uh, I would have to believe, would have to come from an unappropriated fund balance. Uh, yes. if you would agree to that? Yes. Ms. Bramer would agree to that. Just so everyone understands, the motion is as presented, uh, but now we've identified the, the funding source uh, for the uh, uh, for the adjustment. Um, if there's uh, really no other further discussion, I really would like to call the question on this. Um, all those in favor of the resolution as presented, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. One opposed. Uh, motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll move on to the um, a 5B on the back of, of the front page, uh, request to amend the 2016 county budget in the amount of $1,600.98 to reflect the receipt of insurance recovery monies granted a motion regarding 5B. Mr. Simpson, Mr. Dickinson on the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, carried 5C. Uh, request to amend the table of ordinance in the salary schedule to reclassify the position of cleaner annual salary 3480 to a custodian annual salary 36151 effective 19 2016 uh, September 19 uh, Charlton motion to bring 5C to the floor for consideration Mr. Dickinson Mr. Uh, Simpson on the second um, 
my understanding on this is that uh, basically this is being moved from a non-competitive to uh, a competitive position. Is that correct? So this is this is a um, I don't know how it initially became a non um, a, a not competitive or exempt. Cleaner position and labor classification are the same. Uh, the sheriff's department has walked through the process now to make the service. Um, they are working to have this person take on additional responsibilities that are under the title of facility. Um, they have uh, followed our civil service processes and we have signed off on Was the original classification uh, non-competitive or exempt? It's labor. Labor. So, so that labor. would be uh, exempt. This allows a little more work. There is work. no test. There is no, there is no test. requirement for custodian. There is um, a reclassification of a position. Um, civil service um, would review the request in that if the position that they're doing um, the work under this uh, higher level title, and if it is, then we would say yes. It's However, if the board chooses not to reclassify the title, then what happens is the work that the uh, employee is doing under the higher level position has to be withdrawn and they have to have the work done at, at the uh, cleaner level. So it's a question of do they, do they need the custodian work done? And if they do, then if the board approves it, then it's appropriate under civil service based on our review. If you want to say, no, we're not going to fund that change at this time, then um, as a civil service officer, it would be my job to work with uh, the sheriff to say, okay, well, what, what responsibilities do you have to remove from that position um, to have them doing cleaner work? Any questions? Claudia? Just a quick comment. I think that in committee, we were informed this person is deserving of the promotion because she took the class or did whatever, and it's, and it's in their budget. No, it was well explained in committee. Yes. Uh, but it's, it's important for those that, weren't, that are on the committee that weren't in that committee to hear the explanation. Alrighty. Thank you. We're ready for the question then. Uh, all those in favor of item 5C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 5C is carried. Item 6. Referrals from the Health and Human and Social Services Committee request for a transfer of funds in the amount of $6,000 from the contingency account to budget code A60-30-260 Countryside Adult Home, other equipment to cover the cost of installation of new piping uh, for the boiler at Countryside Adult Home due to unforeseen expenses associated with the original boiler uh, installation project. Chair on a motion to bring 6A to the floor for consideration. Uh, Mr. Sokol, Mr. Dickinson on the second. Thank you. Uh, discussion? This is just modifications to the uh, new boiler they're installing. They had to change the piping around. So she needs some extra money to accomplish this. Better now than in January, right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. All those in favor, now call the question. All those in favor of item 6A, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 6A is carried. Uh, Department of Social Services uh, moved down to 6C. Um, request to amend the 2016 county budget in the amount of 38,956 to reflect the receipt of Federal Trade Adjustment Act funding for the training of dislocated workers. General can a motion to bring 6C to the floor for consideration. Uh, Ms. Frazier, uh, Mr. Dickinson on the second discussion. There being none, are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item 6C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 6C is carried. We'll move down to 6D. Request uh, to amend the 2016 county budget in the amount of $343 to reflect the receipt of cost of living adjustment COLA funds from the New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services. Chair, I'll get a motion to bring 6D to the floor. Uh, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Uh, Dickinson on the second. Uh, discussion? Are we ready for the question? All those in favor of item 6D signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item 6D is carried. Item 7, referral from the Park Operations and Management Committee. Request to appropriate $3,809.40 from the budget code A691.0707, deferred revenue, gas light village parking fees to budget code A1645.413, gas light village property repair maintenance building property and authorized reimbursement to the village of Lake George for maintenance costs associated with the gas light village property. Challenge and a motion 
regarding item seven. Mr. Merlino, Mr. Dickinson on the second. Discussion? There being none, all those in favor of item seven signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item seven is carried. Item eight, referral from the Public Works Committee, 8A, request to delete the position of automotive mechanic six, grade nine, annual base salary 33,367, and create the new position of motor equipment operator medium number 26, grade seven, annual base salary 30,969, <coughs> effective September 19, 16, as well as to amend the department table of organization and salary structure accordingly. Chair, I'll get a motion to bring 8A to the floor for consideration. Mr. Simpson, Mr. Dickinson on the second. Discussion? We ready for the question. All those in favor of item 8A signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 8A <coughs> is carried. 8B, request to authorize enrollment in job-related courses. Maha uh, Slanska Scrogans to enroll in advanced bookkeeping applications, principles of economics one and mathematics functions. Introduction to public speaking course was removed. Courses at SUNY Adirondack course term September 2016 through December 16 cost $2,024.50. If this request is approved, uh, the applicant will be due reimbursement of 50% of course uh, costs upon completion with a grade C or better. Uh, this item did uh, go back uh, to committee and came back uh, with the um, uh, courses, uh, 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 one course removed. Chair, I'll a motion to bring 8B to the floor for consideration. Uh, Ms. Bramer, second. <coughs> uh, Mr. Merlino, a uh, discussion. Uh, Sup Supervisor McDevitt. Yes, I, uh, this one uh, I, I think I have an issue with. Uh, I'll probably ultimately support it, but I, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the point is here. It uh, um, seems to me that public speaking, uh, uh, whether the, commu the, com the communication process between peers, between the public between personnel, uh, I think it's as important as, as any basic educational course somebody would take. So, so I would uh, disagree with the uh, uh, the suggestion that uh, uh, public speaking is not a, uh, a a strong and vital component of uh, of the educational process. Based on my experience, supervisor, you could teach that course. Well, thank you, <laughs> uh, Mr. Dickinson. I couldn't teach that course. Uh, no, you couldn't. Yeah, my vocabulary. <laughs> Um, I, I have to uh, uh, agree with Supervisor McDevitt, and I'm also a little disconcerted uh, uh, if you are working towards some goal and they give you an outline of courses, you need to reach it. And this is one of them uh, for the betterment of the common employee. I don't see why we extra offer support them in their education, hopefully to the benefit of the county, or not. I, I, I agree. I, I think it should have been included. Ms. Sieber? Well, I appreciate everyone's um, enthusiasm towards completing degree programs um, while enrolled in county employment. Um, I, I typically am very supportive of moving forward with continuing education. However, in this particular request, um, you know, we're talking about three courses. I've had an opportunity to review the job description as well as the course descriptions for these classes. Um, and looking at that, I've also been able to clarify <coughs> what the purpose of the request is. And it's not only to enhance the current duties of the employer or of the employee, um, employee at this point in time, but it's also to prepare the employee for a job in the future. So it's twofold, and it makes me very uncomfortable uh, having confirmed that with the superintendent um, of DPW that we're going down a path that while it can be essential for job skills, it's also essential for a promotion potential. And so I suspect this board will approve it, but I would encourage all employees that are looking at pursuing their educational degrees, whether it be an associate, a bachelor's, or a master's, to come to our committee and talk to us about their educational goals because as you've said, Supervisor Dickinson, it's part of a program to a higher goal. Um, and so if we're gonna allow it for one, I think that we need to really be evaluating these across the board. I'm also uncomfortable that now that I'm looking at this bill, there's an added, um, last time we looked at this, it didn't say plus books. But if you look at the backup documentation, one course does not require textbooks. Perhaps the other ones do or don't, I'm not sure. I don't see an amount for books and I also don't recall our policy indicating anything other than ancillary fees and tuition. Um, you know, I, this is a benefit for our employees, and it's a great benefit, but it's not an entitlement. And 
um, I think we need to be very careful about these types of approvals. Um, the number of classes, the amounts that are spent on them, the types of fees that are reimbursed, <coughs> and um, I just, it, maybe I'll change my mind by the full board meeting, but I can't support this at committee moving forward. Thank you. I, I was in support of this, but I think Ms. Bieber brings up a really good point. I um, am working with a young adult right now who's going to start at SUNY ACC or at SUNY Adirondack, and 12 credits is almost a full course load, and she's doing this as a full-time county employee, and that, that does make me kind of uncomfortable. I can see her taking one course to improve her particular job training skills here, but I think it's, it is opening the door for every employee to say, great, I want to improve my my chances at a promotion or whatever, and I'm going to go out and get a degree on the county's dime. I mean, it's, it's sort of... I understand. Uh, we have a motion yeah, yeah. on the floor to approve the um, referral from the, uh, I believe it was the Public Works Committee, DPW Committee. Um, why don't we vote on this to see where we are uh, relative to this. Um, uh, let's uh, call the question then. All those in favor of the uh, of 8 uh, B, I believe that's the one, uh, yeah, 8 B as uh, uh, referred from DPW signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Uh, would you raise your hand on the opposed? Uh, three opposed. Uh, the motion is carried. Thank you, everyone, yeah. and thank you for all your comments on this. Let me, let me clarify my opposition, okay? It's just basically, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of going to the front end of this, and I, I would have approved the public speaking course on the front end, okay? So, you know, we're, we're, someone has basically gone back to the well and decided not to take a public speaking course. So that's, that's my point. I'm trying to emphasize the point. I, I think I disagree with Claudia and, and Rachel actually on the issue, but, uh, but my opposition is based on uh, the fact that uh, she should be allowed to take a public speaking course. Well, let me just say uh, we need to move on. But I just, just I know there's, there's, there's been some feelings on this. E either way, some strong feelings that that is exactly what our role is is to prior to taking the course to either approve or disapprove. I mean, it's 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 well understood that I think when you look at the policy that our uh, pre-approval by us is required, not during the course or after the course, but it, they're actually submitting that they would like to t take these courses and. We may approve, we may not approve. We may approve reimbursement on the incidental course for the policy, we may not. That is a decision of this committee and ultimately the board. Uh, Mr. Dickinson. I, I still agree with Peter and, and I voted for her because I'm assuming she's, it's September, I'm assuming she wants to get started here. So I voted for her so she can at least get started. But if she brings a, a back a request to be paid after the fact for this, I would certainly vote for that too. You get in the curriculum, you need these classes, you need them. Right. If we're going to help them, let's help them. If we're not going to help yeah. them, we need to let them know and that. You know, I kind of take exception to, you know, we have a motivated employee that is taking four courses. Well, good for her. You know, <laughs> it, uh, I, I, I think that's a motivated. Maybe that's the kind of employee we should uh, encourage. So, uh, I'll allow one more. Um, I just want to say that uh, during the committee that We need to move on. Thank you. Uh, item uh, 9. 8. 8. I'm eight. sorry. 8. Uh, increased capital project H366 West Mountain Road CR58 
preservation project in the amount of $698,118 to allocate federal and state funds for the construction phase of the project in accordance with the state local agreement with the New York State DOT and return excess local match funds uh, to the funding uh, source. Chair had a motion regarding 8C. Peter, uh, Matt Simpson, thank you. Uh, on the second, a uh, discussion? Uh, there being none, all those in favor of 8C signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 8C is carried. Item 9. All, all the transfers were done, inner, inner, uh, inner budget transfers, nothing from contingency or um, unappropriate fund balance. They're all inner, inner budget transfers. Request uh, items uh, to be discussed by the county administrator. Um, uh, let's let's uh, jump. Uh, uh, well, we have 9A. Uh, that is just for your information. Right. Uh, Those are the transfers. They're all in our budget. 9B, a reimbursement to Brian LaFleur, uh, Fire Coordinator, Director of the Office of Emergency Services in the amount of 2125.80 for items purchased uh, for the OES command vehicle. A uh, challenge in a motion to bring this to the floor for consideration and then perhaps um, the county administrator could fill us in on this. On uh, 9B, uh, if we could bring this to the floor, uh, Claudia, um, Dan Gerard on the second. Did I see your hand, Dan? Uh, good. Uh, Already. Uh, what do we have here? Kevin? What we have is is Brian Brian purchased some items, miscellaneous items for the, the for his work on his command vehicle. He didn't file policy by using the county credit card. He used his own credit card, and it was kicked back by the auditor and the treasurer's office. And I spoke to Brian. You know, he's not allowed to do that. There was twenty-five dollar straps he bought, or or fifty dollar this or that, and I think the highest item was three hundred and fifty eight dollars. He purchased on his own credit card. He's not allowed to do that. He understands the policy. What he's asking is reimbursement for the two thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars that he spent. And I feel it's it's deserved and he'll he'll follow the policy from now on. Mike, do you have a kind of comment? Uh, no, I think you nailed it. I mean it was our policy is very clear on this. Right. And, uh, okay. and I spoke to him maybe. Policy will be followed. It's all itemized, right? You get Absol the itemized. Absolutely. Uh, there were straps. There was uh, miscellaneous things. There may have been a. Uh, it's all itemized. It's all on the voucher. It could be all paid for out of the codes in his funds. He had funds available. He just didn't follow the policy. He went on uh, his credit card. He could have gone to the county and purchased them through the county. Some of these items aren't on our purchasing policy. Frank. I didn't look at C sales tax. I'll, I'll check. Yeah, I'll check it. We can minus. Yeah. The original amount, if you recall, that you gave me yesterday, I talked to Jen from Office of Emergency Services. This amount is less because that included four dollars and change in sales tax, and they did kick it. So off. he did took it off. So it's already those numbers don't have I, I looked at the vouchers, Frank, but I didn't check for sales tax. So. Well, I don't know if they're all taxable items. It depends on what it was. But we have a good itemized uh, voucher. That was quick math in your head there, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> we all see now why your budget director. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, Claudia. Thanks. Maybe um, can we just clarify? There's two different numbers: 2125 and then 2121 with no change. Is that the amount we're requesting? That's about the four dollars. Yeah, they, there's two different numbers there. We had a different number. What I was told was that the original vouchers that came in didn't have any sales tax, and there was one that they had forgotten to remove it. Okay. So the lower amount, that's the even amount, is what they're looking for, and that's exclusive of it. And exactly that amount is. Twenty, the twenty-one twenty-one, I think it is. Twenty-one twenty-one even. Yes, nine. So it's on the attachment that they gave me. And nine B shows twenty-one twenty-one. Yeah. All right, 2121, those that made the um, motion in the second, uh, 2121. Will your manager motion to uh, adjust to the 2121? Mr. Bramer and Mr. Gerard. Yeah. Mr. Bramer and Mr. Gerard, I believe. Uh, <laughs> very good. All righty. Are we ready for the question then? All those in favor of 9B as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 9B is carried. 9C. Appointment of a director of Office of the Aging. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to Matt. Chairman Sokol. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, good news. Uh, we, uh, as you know, a couple months ago, uh, 
lost um, Christy Sabo, who was the director for the Office of the Aging. Uh, she left her post to move to Pennsylvania, I believe. Um, so we've been without a director. Uh, in the meantime, we've had over a dozen applicants, Jackie. Uh, four of them qualified for the position. So we did an informal interview, um, which consisted of the chairman, Supervisor Conover, myself, and Jackie. And we decided on a candidate. Uh, this candidate, you all know, um, she is sitting right in the room, um, but we are thrilled to death that uh, Deanna Park uh, took the post and she will be our new director for the Office of the Aging. So from, uh, from that, we will be um, missing a, um, a director for Countryside, so we will have to throw that out and we have to send that out to... We have uh, to post for that, right, Jackie? We have to post that, Jackie? Mm -hmm. Post okay. that position. So what I'm looking for is a resolution uh, to to appoint Deanna Park as our director for the Office of the Aging at a salary of $62,000. So we have a motion. Mr. Dickinson on the motion. Mr. Gerard on the second. Um, well, I, I think it's a splendid, just a wonderful appointment. And I, I don't know of a more dedicated uh, hard-working county employee uh, I've had the privilege of working with these uh, years here and um, I just would add that for the record she did say though that she wasn't going to plow the parking lot down here mm -hmm. <laughs> <Love having her. laughs> already well and what's nice also I would like to add that uh, you know through the process Deanna will also help the new director for countryside to get her adjusted and, and uh, work with the staff Alrighty then. Um, Thank you. We ready for the question then? Um, all those um, in favor of item 9C uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 9C is carried. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> item 10. Uh, effective one. Effective one. Oh. <laughs> apologies. Apologies. What's oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we need an effective date. Uh, did you? Uh, Tuesday. We actually didn't discuss that. Uh, probably an item. Well, it was. I would do it. Should we just uh, make it a the following Monday, not not this Monday, the following Monday. Well, it has to get it has to get board approval first, though, right? That was good. Does it have to have board approval? Oh, okay. After the board meeting. What is it? September. September 19th, after board. September 19th, is that without objection? All righty. Yep. That's the date. Good. We'll get our other job posted. And then the other job will be posted. Very good. Um, item 10, request to be discussed by the county attorney. I'm sitting here very patiently. Request to amend resolution number 338 of 2016, authorizing supplemental agreement number one with Clark Patterson Lee to add construction inspection services to CR 31 and CR 13 County Bridge Cleaning Project to include reference to prior resolution number 294 of 15, which adjusted the aggregate total of the supplemental agreement with Clark Patterson Lee. Sure. Carol, to motion we intend to support for explanation. Um, Mr. Simpson, Mr. Dickinson on the second. Uh, Brian, what do we have here? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the original resolution uh, called for $35,000 for construction for consultation services. That was a mistake uh, that I made. Uh, it was supposed to be 68,000. We uh, amended that resolution subsequently. Uh, then uh, the next uh, change, this one is a normal part of the project process, I'm advised. And this is for additional construction inspection services for $138,000. Uh, apparently the, the process includes different steps with different functions that get added as the project progresses. Any questions? There is none. Buddy? So we already have this money? We're just amending the agreement to that's reference the money? That's my understanding. Yes. There's no request for amending the amount that I see. Commissioner? Uh, my understanding is this is simply a clerical mistake. Um, the request that went through committee was proper and showed the full amount. So 
and on the resolution request, we requested an increase to the capital project. And then in the resolution, that increase to the capital project was listed as a total new capital project as just a total amount. Right. So the, the resolution request that went through the committee was proper. We went back and we saw the resolution. We went back to our original request and said, all right, did we make a mistake? And then we found that it was simply a clerical error at some point when the resolution was passed. Okay, thank you. So there being no further questions, I'll call the motion. All those in favor of item 10 as presented, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, carried. Um, I'd like to move down to uh, Roman numeral 5V2, uh, um, referral from the Health and Human Social Services Countryside Adult Home to amend resolution 267 of 15 to state the Countryside Adult Home will pay time and, a, and one half to per diem employees who work a holiday any hours over eight each shift or any hours over 40 uh, per week. Uh, we had uh, asked the uh, county administrator uh, to look into this and I think he's... Uh, yeah, uh, we recommend that we do approve this request. We met with Payroll Rules Committee and the Treasurer's Office went through the whole request and it, it, is, uh, it is justified on the part of Countryside Adult Home. So the Payroll Rules Committee is recommending that we approve this request for per diem employees. All right, let's bring this to the floor for discussion. Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Simpson, uh, any discussion on it? Are we ready for the question? Then all those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is carried. Um, I believe that's it. Any other business to come before the? Well, I would just say the pending item number one, I, I think we could take that off and discuss at budget time. Uh, there are some payroll rules changing, so we're going to have to look at some of the positions under $47,000 to decide. Uh, there's a new law into effect that if you earn under, you have to raise up salaries to 47000 or pay overtime. So we're going to be looking at all these at budget time. If we could take that off and we can report during the budget cycle, does that work for you, Frank? Or do you want to leave it on there? Right, but that would be some department heads will come into that, or, or deputy. Do uh, you want to leave it on or we can take it off? I just thought it would be a budget. Yeah, I think it's going to be on there. Okay, we'll leave it on then. We'll try to work this out. And also, uh, just for the discussion, not all departments have deputies, and so we have some. So yeah, we're gonna this needs to, this needs a considerable amount of thought. I think the in, the intent on the, a part of uh, some of the supervisors, I think Ms. Seifer and others, was uh, to try to standardize what our policy yeah. was here. But maybe it's Rachel, you could comment on just to, as to what where this was going. No, I think you're correct, um, Supervisor Conover, and I'd like to see it remain on the pending item, but also if we could maybe have our county attorney again take a look at it and get closer to a, some type of resolution where we standardize this practice, because I do think that we have departments that are affected by it, and I'd hate to be in a situation again where unexpectedly a department head goes out and we're once again debating over um, an adequate or appropriate salary. Well, so this is more for the fill-in pay? Right. Okay. Yeah, 31 right. consecutive days after they've been out. Gotcha. This, just, this came up as we discussed. <coughs> it just says you analyze this you, and you look at it, department, it, 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 we'll look at it. It's not as clean up sweep as we originally thought it might be. That's all. Gotcha. Uh, yes, I just, when you're looking at the time frame, I wonder if a longer time would be appropriate or not. You know, mm -hmm. If someone is filling in for, say, 60 days without additional pay, and then I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just fooling. Just kidding. Okay. All righty. 90 days. <laughs> All right. Jack. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a request that I'm bringing directly here only because uh, we just went over over budget on a road project that we were in uh, Monday and Tuesday out in Lake Luzerne. So the request is to transfer funds from the uh, 5112 8220, which is County Route 16 East River Drive project, over to uh, D5112-8250, which is County Route 16 Bay Road project. Um, the work was done. It was completed Monday and Tuesday. My staff informed me that field conditions needed uh, some additional um, 
milling, <coughs> which resulted in an overage in our asphalt. So I'd like to move $15,000 out of that project into the next one. Um, if the committee wants to entertain this, we'll be able to pay our bills on time. I can bring it through committee. It'll just delay payment of the to the contractor for work that's already done. Uh, yeah. Um, without objection, I'll entertain a motion on this. Uh, any objection? There being none, then Chair, I'll entertain a motion uh, to bring this uh, uh, to the table for consideration. Mr. Dickinson, uh, Mr. Simpson on the second. Um, this would be uh, basically a transfer within the budget. I believe I heard uh, a D5112-8220 to D5112-8250 in the amount of $15,000. Thank you. Um, 5112-8250-280. All righty. Ready for the question then? All those in favor of the request uh, to uh, complete the transfer signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Chair, I'll a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Mr. Um, Simpson, Mr. Mr. Uh, McDivitt on the second. <laughs> uh, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah.